Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Well, here we are again working on the Thai River section of the Piedmont Southern Layout. Now, one thing I wanted to point out to you. Uh, in the video last week, I said that you had to use Windex in order to get these tight bends like I put in this corner here. Now, one thing I didn't point out, but uh, I did point out in the video I linked to, and that was the one on doing a curved backdrop. And I'll add another link to it right here for you if you want to go back and take a look. Now, I covered that quite a bit of detail in that video on making curved backdrops. And I, you know, I was very specific about the fact that you have to have the Windex with the Ammonia D. And I'm not 100% sure about this, but apparently it is the Ammonia that is critical in order to get these type of bends with the hardboard. Now, my assumption is that the ammonia in the Windex softens the wood fibers in the hardboard itself, and that's what allows you to, to uh, make these very tight curves with hardboard. And once it dries, it is set in that position. So here, I went ahead and I've already attached this one to the wall. Uh, when I took the screws off and, and released it uh, from tension, uh, you know, it, it was perfectly set in that position. So I didn't have to worry about, you know, pushing it around the corner or anything. It was just a simple matter of going ahead and uh, screwing it in. Now, as I said, go back and take a look at that video on doing curved backdrops, because I talked about it then, and there was a lot of follow-up discussion and questions in the comments. So take a look through those comments. Um, if you have any questions about the, the ammonia and you know how it works and all of that kind of thing, there's just a lot in there and I see no need to go ahead and, and cover that all again. Okay, before we get started, I wanna ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click on. I've already attached that uh, piece of hardboard uh, that I bent in the last video to the supports on the wall, and I've used drywall screws that are countersunk into the surface of the uh, hardboard itself. So what I want to do today is go ahead and start work with my joint compound to uh, give us a nice flat surface over the heads of those screws, and we can go ahead and proceed with painting after that. Now what I use, this is just a simple bucket, uh, it's a one gallon bucket of um, joint compound. And uh, this particular one I like because it's mold resistant, it's low dust, and it's lightweight. So it's got a lot of factors that make it great for use with model railroads. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to pop this open, uh, take my uh, spatula, and we'll go ahead and start applying some of this and get that done. And then we can move on to other projects down the wall here. Okay, so I've got my uh, joint compound ready. And let's go ahead and start uh, doing a little cosmetic work here. So we're going to just take and smear it on over top of these screw heads here. And And once that sets up, and it won't take long, we can come back and put on another coat. I usually go through this, oh, about two or three iterations to get a good smooth coat here. And it, it's going to cover it completely, so we'll be in good shape there. So uh, I'm just going to go down through here, and let's go ahead and knock off a few more of these. Because once we get this done, then we can go ahead and proceed with painting the backdrop blue. And in a future video, I'll show you how I use my own photographs for the backdrops. Okay, so that one's done. And we're just going to keep moving on down here.
so that takes care of the first set of screws. Okay, so looking back towards the joint, I just wanted to show you this expanse of uh, hardboard, the second piece. Uh, this is eight feet long, and uh, it just passes along behind uh, Tai River and will be the scenic backdrop for, the, for that. Now, at this far end here, this is where the track goes through the wall and around to the utility room where I'm building a, uh, a helix back there. And uh, that will allow it to go up to the second level and trains on the second level to come down to the first. But first I've got to uh, make a cutout. You can see I've already made the cutout here. In order to uh, do that, I went ahead and transferred some lines from the, uh, from the tra track diagram that I shared with you in the previous video. So these are my uh, track center lines here and here, the red lines. I did a little bit of, uh, of, of work with the blue and uh, then had to move things back a little bit because there's a two by four right here on the corner of this wall. So I had to go back uh, far enough in order to get back past that. So uh, the red lines represent the track center lines. The green lines represent the approximate outer limits of the track road bed. So all I did was took my uh, tunnel face here and uh, used that to mark the uh, hardboard. And using my jigsaw, I just cut out an opening big enough through there uh, for everything to pass through. So. Eventually, once this is, is once we do the scenery, we will add this guy here to the front, and there'll be trees and all kinds of uh, vegetation. Actually, this might come out a little bit further, and uh, have a little bit of relief here uh, along the face. But at any rate, that's way that's the way that's going to be. So the next thing I have to do before I proceed any further is back in here. I have to cut out a hole in the wall. And um, don't tell my wife about this. She hasn't seen it yet. And she doesn't come down here very often, which is a good thing uh, for me. And so we will have our track flowing through here into the tunnel. It goes from about a two inch uh, on center uh, uh, alignment here for the track to about two and a half inches on center as it goes around the curve. Because as the track, you, and you always want to do that with your, with your track because as the uh, cars start to go around the curve, they start to swing out. Particularly your passenger cars, your longer cars, they will tend to uh, take up a little bit more room. And if you've got two trains passing at the same time, uh, it sometimes uh, doesn't work out too well if you've got a lot of overhang in locomotives and cars going around curves. So it's always better to kick out your uh, kick out your distance between tracks to about two and a half inches and two inches on center here on the straights. So what I need to do now is I'm going to take this out and then we're going to go ahead and cut out this section of sheetrock here. Now what I'm going to use is this uh, Dremel, it's a little micro Dremel, uh, can go up to about 28,000 RPM and got rid of my corded one. Well, I gave it to my wife. But at any rate, what I'm using here is a spiral bit, and it's designed specifically for doing cutouts like this in sheetrock and, and other types of materials. So uh, it will cut right into it, plunge it, and then you can just lead it right around any opening that you want to cut out. So let's get ready to do that. And I'm going to turn the sound off while I do that, because otherwise it's going to be nasty because I've got to use this, and I've got to have a... Uh, a shop vac running at the same time. Okay, so let's get started. First, I'm going to turn on the shop vac. And then I'll go ahead and get going. Okay, I've got one final cut to do here across the bottom, and we'll have it open. So let me get started on that. 
Unfortunately, I ran out of battery uh, in the middle of that cut and lost that part of the video. So uh, I did manage to get this cut out, as you can see here, giving me this opening behind it. Now, I want to show you something else that I'm going to be using here and on the Piedmont Southern in general. This is a mold that you can get from Woodland Scenics. And the way that you use this is you simply pour plaster over this area here. And you can see that it is molded to represent uh, cut stone, that type of material that you would find inside of a tunnel. And then once the plaster dries, and I use hydrocal plaster here, you can just pop that right out of the mold and make a couple of those. And it gives you a really nice tunnel liner that you can then uh, paint and weather and use just inside of the tunnel portal. So this will be set up like this inside the tunnel portal. And then the tunnel portal, which is also a Woodland Scenics product, will go right in front of it. So that gives you a, uh, the appearance of the uh, uh, inside cuts on the mountain, on the rock that make up the mountain, and produce the tunnel. And then you can do uh, more of these in a row, or you can just go ahead and use uh, cardboard or whatever other material you usually use. And we'll get around to that when we get to the scenery. Um, but you can find this, uh, this mold here at any place where they sell um, Woodland Scenics products. Uh, it's not that expensive and you can use this thing over and over and over again. I've had it a number of years now. So that's the way that one works. Okay, let's go ahead. I want to get that other piece of hardboard backdrop set up into place now that we've got the hole cut for the, uh, for the tunnel. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, remount the hardboard uh, for the backdrop here with this section uh, and have it bend around uh, to uh, form the face of the tunnel there. So let me do that. Now, I'm going to flip it up into position and work it so that I can get it in there without knocking anything loose. And there we go. Very easy and simple to do. And I've got it popped into place down at that end. So what I want to do next is I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes for the uh, drywall screws and we'll get those countersunk and uh, installed on these uprights. And then I can go ahead and uh, add the uh, joint compound to them. Okay, so I've got my uh, countersinking bit here mounted in the drill. So let's go ahead and start drilling some holes for these screws. I always offset my screw holes just a little bit. And now I'm going to take off that burr. It was raised there. And we'll clean out the hole. That one's pretty clean. Okay, so that's ready. Let's go ahead and get those screws in. So you can see it's just slightly below the surface of the hardboard. You don't want to go in too far with these because you will punch right on through the back of the hardboard because this is only an eighth of an inch thick. There we go. Now all of those are set up and ready for the joint compound. Now at this point I'll be putting a, uh, a seam here 
So we'll put the uh, joint, uh, the uh, seam tape right here first. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And then I'll finish off doing the rest of these uh, screw heads to, uh, to go ahead and finish the rest of the, uh, of the mounting of the hardboard. Okay, so for this part, I'm going to be using this, uh, I think it's fiberglass uh, joint uh, tape or seam tape. And basically, uh, I use this instead of the old paper kind because it seems to just do a much, e a much better job of, uh, of holding up uh, as, you put the, uh, as you put the joint compound in place. Now, for this, I'm just going to start it here at the bottom and we'll go on up. So it's got adhesive on the back of it. Like that. And then I can just trim it at the top. So that is how easy that is. Now let me get the joint compound out again and we'll go ahead and apply a layer to that. Okay, once again, I've got my bucket of mud, so let's go ahead and start applying it over this fiberglass mesh. I tell you, as many seams as I've done, I should be an expert at this by now, but to be honest with you, every time I do it, I have to learn again, it seems like. This is kind of stiff. It's starting to dry out, it seems like. But at any rate, it's going on fairly well. Okay. There we go. This piece at the bottom just wants to keep coming up. There we go. Hopefully that'll stay put now. Yeah, there we go. That's better. I'm just going to leave that alone and let it dry that way. And come back and put another layer on later. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and go down the row and finish off uh, installing more of these screws and getting everything all set up for next week. Okay, I finally got all of the, uh, the drywall screws set in place here on the backboard. So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and finish spackling all of those uh, using my joint compound here and get the uh, seam that I uh, started uh, one more coat and get everything sanded down. And then by next week, we'll be ready to go ahead, paint the backdrop a nice sky blue. We'll be using the same uh, paint that I used for the module and showed you about uh, in a previous video on uh, blue skies and, and the like. And then I'll show you after that how I go about uh, taking my own photographs and printing them out on my, uh, my large Canon uh, photo printer and uh, using them for my backdrops here. So we'll be able to get uh, individual sections uh, installed uh, here on the layout and we'll be making progress. So have a good weekend and uh, we'll see you here 
next week with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.